Hey guys, the big day is here. The F-22A Raptor mod by Grinelli Designs is now live. In order to download it, head over to fsoutlet.com slash F-22. The links to that will be in the video description and the pinned comment below. Go ahead and download that mod. And the rest of this video is a tutorial on how to use the mod and all the functions and systems and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we're going to start off the video by cold starting the F-22. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you a little feature that is optional. You don't have to use it. We're going to press COM1, and it's going to open this menu in the top right corner. We're going to press ground crew, ground electric power, and we're going to say on. Chief, turn on the ground power. And what that's going to do is pull up this little ground electric Copy. unit here that you'll see in a second. And this is purely for fun. The F-22 is obviously advanced enough that it doesn't need this little thing, but, you know, if you like it, you can use it. Um, so we're going to turn it off today. Ground power off. Chief, turn off the ground power. And this is going to go away, and I'm going to cold start the F-22 without the assist of the ground power. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit battery to the on position. Ground power is now off. And then we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit the APU to start and left and right generator to the on position. And once you've done that, you'll realize that your RPMs are still not revving up. You're going to click on the throttles here, and they're going to step forward just like the F-18 Hornet. At this point, you'll see your RPMs start to rev up on your engines. Very nice, and that'll just take a minute for the F-22 to start up. And we're going to go ahead and close the canopy while we wait for that. So you can see ground electric power is gone. And your MFDs will come on. I think it's about 70% RPM. Okay, and there is all of your MFDs. Now there's one more thing you need to do. You'll notice that the weapon bay is displayed as open, and you need to close that. In order to close that, you're going to press ground override. And once that's done, you'll see the symbology here change. So now you're good to go. The only other thing I'll mention is the FCS. We'll talk about this later in the video. Leave it in FCS auto if you want the F-22 to take off on its own with basically no assist from you. Okay, so that is how you're going to turn on cold start the F-22. Looking at the radar screen of the F-22, the center MFD will have a button called RDR. You press this button and it'll bring up the very familiar F-15 radar screen. You then press the power button to turn on the radar. Elevation controls are on the left hand side and range is on the right hand side. PRF or pulse repetition frequency is controlled via this button here. And mode will change between range while scan and track while scan. And that pretty much summarizes the F-22 radar. Looking now at the weapons bay of the F-22, you can see that we have two left and right bays which house the Sidewinder 9Xs, and we have a center bay which houses six AMRAMs. You can see here that the symbology is weapon safe. We can change weapon safe to say weapons armed by coming over to the master arm switch and throwing it to the armed position. You will see the symbology change to weapons armed. Now it's time to look at some binds. Once you have your master arm on, you're ready to fire your weapons. Do not use the default weapon fire and weapon release binds of the FC-3 aircraft. Alternatively, bind weapon release under the F-22 HOTAS category. Binding the weapons release under F-22 HOTAS ensures that when you press weapon release, the corresponding weapons bay will actually open to release the missile. Failure to bind the correct weapons release bind under F-22 HOTAS and binding the old weapons release of the FC-3 aircraft will result in a situation that when you press weapon release, the missile will fall out of the bay, but the bay will not open. To avoid this, make sure you have the correct bind. 
We'll now go over the different binds to switch from the center to the left to the right bay depending on what you want to fire. You can see here that I can switch comfortably with the binds from center to left and right bays. Highlighted in green we can see the weapons bay controls that you will need to bind. We have select all which will select all of the bays left and right sidewinder and the center. Uh, we can see select center, which selects obviously just the AMRAM, select left, and select right. These are obviously very self-explanatory. Keep in mind that due to the FC3 limitations of this aircraft, selecting right sidewinder first and pressing weapon release will still fire the left sidewinder first. So keep that in mind when you're selecting your weapons bays. It's also worth noting that the F-22 has a weapons bay air override, as seen here. On the weapons bay symbology it is displayed as air override in red this will keep the weapons bay open and will only close it when you press air override again the weapon bay override air and override toggle binds can be seen here highlighted in yellow as you can see there is a two position style switch and a toggle button style the two position style is obviously if you have a button on your HOTAS that you can put in the up and down position and the toggle is if you want to bind just one key that you can press repeatedly to turn it on and off. The air override functionality in my opinion is useful if you want to fire multiple AMRAMs. You can hold the bay doors open, drop multiple AMRAMs and then close them. And alternatively it's good for sidewinders if you want to just scare the crap out of your opponent. You can just bring the sidewinder out and hold it there and uh, watch the panic ensue. The F-22 comes with a two-stage trigger. It has a first and second detent. The first detent will open the door, the second one will actually fire the gun. If you do not have a two-stage trigger, just bind the second detent, it will automatically open the door for you and fire the gun. Selecting the gun is the same as other FC-3 planes, simply press the C bind in order to pull up the gun. Quickly having a look at the binds, you can see it is called Weapons Trigger First and Second Detent. They can be found under the category F-22 HOTAS. Looking at the F-22's FCS or Flight Control Computer, we see that we have three different modes. We have FCS Auto, which can be changed via the HUD mode of the F-22. Up here, if you press the HUD button, you can see that you have several options to choose from. If you go to nav mode, you'll notice that the FCS changes to G. The aircraft will now trim for 1G. If you switch it to BVR mode, you'll see that the FCS switches over to AOA, and this allows you to pull more angle of attack. If you O-ride or override the FCS, you will turn off the flight control computer and you will be able to pull even more AOA. This is naturally the, the mode that I dogfight in, in BVR mode, I may stay in this, I may override. Also, when binding your pitch and roll controls, ensure to not bind the default pitch found in the Axis Assign category. Instead, ensure that you are binding F-22 FCS Pitch Axis. Looking now at the internal lights of the F-22, we have two knobs over here, which will control the internal lights and the floodlights. And you can see here we have a little knob, which is the day and night selector for the MFDs. All right, and it's really just that basic for the internal lights. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is over here, we have a little button called config. And if we click this, you can see all kinds of features that Gurnelli has put in here for you to customize your aircraft. And I believe they only work on the ground. You can see um, we can change the flood mode. Before we do that, let me show you one other thing. If you come over here, you can actually pull these out and they control, you know, the floodlights there. See that? And here as well, you got another one. That's your other floodlight. And then you can see here, you can actually pick the color. So you can go floodlight from green to blue if you like that. You can go to red. I think red looks pretty good. Um, or you can stick with green, or I guess white. Now you can do white and you can do green. Um, next you have a family photo. I won't get too much into this and uh, you got this little thing over here. Let me know if you know what this is. Put it in the comment section if you know the reference. All right, and that's the config menu. You can change the canopy color from the outside, the external view, um, and all that stuff. So this is for you to little, a little something for you to play around with. Looking now at the external lights of the F-22, they are located right above the internal lights. 
we have the formation lights right here we'll crank up and down we then have the position lights we have uh, off we have anti-collision we have position and anti-collision we have position flash and just position so let's have a look at this from the external And the last thing we have is the air-to-air -air refueling lights. You can see here this triangular looking knob. We're going to turn that all the way to bright and then we're going to hit open AAR. Looking at the fuel section, it's pretty self-explanatory. The blue here indicates the fuel that you have in the aircraft. Also, if you had uh, wing tanks, they would be displayed in this symbology on the wing here. The turquoise color represents the fuel, obviously. Um, this MFD can be shifted to other MFDs. It doesn't have to be on the right-hand one, but this is the default position that you will see it. On the issue of thrust vectoring, something everybody's very curious about with the F-22, it technically isn't modeled, but it's animated. Keep in mind that if you override the FCS system in the F-22, as shown previously in this tutorial, you are awarded some extra AOA abilities with the F-22, which can give you the feeling that you have a form of thrust vectoring. Technically, it's not modeled though, it is only animated. And with that, we conclude the tutorial of the F-22 Raptor. A big thank you to Gurnelli for all of his hard work and the boys over at Gurnelli Designs. Uh, fantastic work on the F-22 mod. It's everything we could have dreamed for. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful. For more information, check out fsoutlet.com. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.